All right, so I'm doing this video uh, to help people determine on their Clarks, you know, if they've got transmission issues or just kind of to give you a little knowledge on how to do, run the pressure checks on these things. Um, so first things first, uh, obviously check and make sure that the transmission has oil in it. Um, I run ATF in mine. Um, you can run 10 weight in the winters. You can run 30 weight in the summer. So pretty much 10 weight ATF or... Um, 30 weight but there are some transmissions that have a specific uh i guess clutch material in them that you cannot run atf so i guess if you're worried about it just run like 30 weight would be good you know um if it doesn't get really cold where you are at then 30 weight's great if it does and you use it in the winter to say plow snow or something run some 10 weight in there they're really not that picky though you can run just about anything but um if you get a transmission manual it'll tell you in there what you can cannot run and what you should for which temperatures and stuff um on the dipstick it'll basically on mine obviously it depends on what yours is but on mine it's up in the cab to the right of the driver's seat and basically one is a fill hole and the other is your dipstick the dipstick's the smaller kind of cane style <clears throat> and uh when you're with hot oil when it's running it should be on the full mark with a clutch engaged so like in forward and first or something and it should say full um, without it running mine usually read about three inches over full give or take <clears throat> and that's pretty good so anyway what we're looking at here um i've got some stuff set up here i've got a flow meter out of my pump which that's a brand new pump i just put on this machine um so i wasn't getting the flow i was supposed to have due to a uh, basically an aftermarket pump I bought that was misadvertised. Um, it was supposed to be a 31 gallon a minute pump for this setup and well, due to its displacement and stuff, it was nowhere near that. So I changed that out with actually a hydraulic pump off my 55B that had the right displacement and everything was the same and we've got 31 gallons a minute, a little bit more actually. So um, anyway, what you're looking at here is your torque converter uh, regulator valve um, and this is your converter out pressure right here you see where it says out um, and that out right there goes down and runs along the frame and goes to those two lines in the bottom or one of those two lines in the bottom of the radiator and uh, that that's your oil cooler for your transmission and on this machine the hydraulics <clears throat> so this gauge right here you need to install a 0 to 100 gauge and I've got this gauge just running up into the cab so I can see what's going on with it. Um, this line right here, that's your converter in pressure. Um, don't mind all that oil there. That's just shit I drained out of my tank last night because it got a little cold here. So, um, And I had some other little oily issues and that's why things are a mess. Normally this machine's not so filthy. <coughs> so that uh on your torque converter regulating pressure there on your outlet pressure depending on the machine now this is on an 8000 series converter i'm doing this on and a 5000 series transmission so depending on your machine it may be different this is just to give you an idea of what to do but on this particular machine on my converter out pressure at 2000 rpm with hot oil i should have between 55 and 75 psi of converter out pressure Right now, this machine runs at about 70 PSI of outlet pressure, um, but the actual converter itself is, uh, it leaks a little, it's right at the maximum leakage, um, and I'll go into that test here in just a second. Um, <clears throat> and so when you have the maximum leakage, you tend to make a little heat and not have very good power, uh, and so that's kind of what's going on with me. Um, the, the actual, to do the leakage test, once you got this line right here this this one and basically what you do is you need two people warm the machine up to operating temp so 180 to 200 degrees on the oil and then go ahead and put one guy down here with a five gallon bucket loosen say that hose clamp right there and then the other guy will rev, rev up the engine to approximately 2000 rpm and this guy will go ahead and pull this pipe apart from that hose I recommend maybe, you know, getting it kind of loosened up before you have the engine running and everything so it comes apart easy for you. 
and then run that oil into a bucket for 15 seconds. So I just count in my head and then, you know, once you get 15 seconds, go ahead and stuff the hose back together. Um, it's a little bit messy. And then multiply the oil volume that you get by four. And that will tell you your gallons per minute of leakage. <clears throat> and on this particular one, if that is over five or close to five, that's a bit of a problem. And so that's kind of where I got now. So I have a torque converter on order that I'm going to rebuild and swap in because I run this machine almost every day. Um, here's the tag for your transmission. I guess to give you a picture of where it is, it's right there. Mine's a 5421-23. The torque converter tag, you can kind of see it. It's up there by to the right of that pump. And that's a 8502-11. Uh, the five stands for 15 inch impeller. Uh, the other shit kind of is gear ratio and things like that. Um, here is the transmission control belt block. Um, and so basically I have my pressure gauge hooked up here um, which on this particular training it's real easy follow the line from the filters which is where the oil pumps or the oil goes first to them from the pump comes over oh, sorry comes over goes in there right there and then that's it not to be confused with that other one, that's your lube oil pressure. Um, this is your transmission clutch pressures. So, um, and then here's the rear cover for gears or clutches one and two. Here's the cover up here uh, for forward reverse three and four. Forward reverse are on the top, three and four are on the bottom. I believe this is four and that's third or yeah this is fourth that's third and i'm not sure which way these are for forward and reverse um <clears throat> so basically with your clutch pressure same thing you kind of want to when you do all these tests you pretty much want to just do them all at once um because then you only got to warm the machine up once and have your tools out once and just be done with it and figure out where you stand um but with the clutch pressure basically what you do is once the machine's hot oil uh, just put it just you know park whatever put it in forward and first gear write the pressure down forward and second write the pressure down forward and third write the pressure down forward and fourth write the pressure down and then uh, oh and the gauge you'll need for that is uh, is generally uh, I'm using a, a zero to 500 right there it's a cat gauge um, but like a zero to 300 is more than plenty depending on your max pressure but zero to 500 is good too um, cause on this particular loader, you should have between 180 and 220 pounds of clutch pressure or PSI, sorry. <clears throat> and so, yeah. And so once you do forward one, two and three and four, then you'll do reverse. And basically say if you, when you were doing your forward, if say num second gear was low, well, obviously when you check reverse, you need to try and check it in one of the other gears that are, you know, not low basically i usually just go forward one two three four reverse one two three four and just get a good reading of everything um if you have any variance of more than five psi in any one clutch or another um technically that means that clutch is worn and needs rebuilt um on this particular transmission not really to worry pretty simple you can pull those two hoses off uh, be prepared for a lot of oil or you can drain your hydraulic tank down some which is good or if you have plugs that's another option um, then that that cover comes off it's just got a bunch of bolts around the perimeter um, and they all come off and you're good to go there uh, I personally get all my transmission parts from either Palmer Johnson Power Systems which is Dana Spicer or you can get them from a company in Canada who's actually been very good to me um, they're called BPT components, um, and they sell aftermarket stuff and most of it's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, if you have to rebuild a clutch, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal and it's definitely worth it. Uh, it saves you a lot of headaches and slippage and stuff like that in the future. <clears throat> the other test you can do to see, which is good if you suspect you have a slipping clutch, which on a Clark, usually you'll know it. 
if it's slipping because they will make a loud like brake screeching sound when the clutches start slipping unless it's just completely beyond gone but on these they'll actually weld themselves together and you'll be stuck in a gear um there is that drive line you can kind of see it there there's a drive line that runs between the torque converter and the transmission on most clark loaders um and so if you say like bury your bucket in a pile of dirt or rocks or whatever the case um, you can even set your brakes if you want and then go ahead and like put it in first and fourth and then throttle up and then you can put it in first and third first and second or sorry i'm i mean forward and fourth third second first so on and so forth and just throttle up and if any one gear it spins that drive line without turning your tires on your loader then that clutch is slipping um and so that's a pretty easy way to check if you've got a slipping clutch but like i said it's pretty hard to miss um just another couple things about uh the clarks you know drain your air tanks in the winter or put an air dryer of some sort on them i don't particularly have that uh, you know make make sure your radiators are clean too these things always get plugged up full of oil on this particular one i want to find a reverse flow fan but this one's a pusher fan and anytime you have the slightest little oil leak on your engine it just blows into the fan and makes a whole big old mess and pisses you off <clears throat> so obviously if you're new to clark's and wheel loaders in general they do have what's called final drives or planetaries um, you've got to check them basically on this particular one you'd put the arrow down um, or but really in reality you can just level this plug out you know with the center and verify make sure there's oil you know just if you can reach in and touch it like that you're good um, you can put 50 weight in these um, or say 80 90 would be fine um, the other big thing that I see a lot of people have no clue about is what's called the mid mount bearing it's kind of acts like a carrier bearing but uh, as you can see there's the front drive shaft there and you've got your middle drive shaft between your transmission and the mid mount bearing um there's the breather there um they do have a drain and a check plug on them those just take gear oil as well um while you're at it there's your main pressure check right there for your main hydraulics on a 275 if you ever need it the other thing is your steering gearbox the top section of that's just a little saginaw gearbox um and those have to be lubricated with grease or uh gear oil um other than that, I mean, pretty much everything's pretty common sense. I mean, this one has air brakes, so they pretty much function just like a semi-truck would on this one. Uh, on my little 55B, they're a little different uh, than that. But, again, everything's pretty well simple. Um, you know, good loader. Anything, any other questions anybody has, feel free to ask me.